Hello again, everyone. And the next uh, item of business is consideration of motion 24442 in the name of Nicola Sturgeon on a motion of thanks. So just to let everyone know, uh, all our party leaders will speak in this debate and then we will take a vote. And uh, I hope our last vote of the session will be a unanimous one. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm going to take advantage uh, of my position in the chair. Oh, I should have said... Uh, we'll take a vote, but if not to run off, because we'll have a few words from our esteemed presiding officer at that point. Uh, but I'm going to take advantage uh, of my position here just now. Um, last time I'll be able to speak in this chamber as an elected member. Uh, just to thank the lovely people of East Cobride uh, for having given me the opportunity to represent that fine town for so many years. East Cobride, of course, was once known as Scotland's most successful new town, but it has a very bright future in its older age, a smart, sustainable East Kilbride. It's been an absolute honour and a privilege uh, over the last 20 plus years to work both in East Kilbride and to work here in our parliament, and it's brought me much joy in both places. So thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. And as I said, we are considering motion 2442 in the name of Nicola Sturgeon on a motion of thanks. Would all those who wish to speak in the debate, and we know who they are, so don't be chancing your luck here, <laughs> press your request to speak buttons. And I call on Nicola Sturgeon to speak to and move the motion for around four minutes, please, First Minister. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, let me begin by paying tribute to you. You have been an outstanding uh, representative for your constituents in East Kilbride. You've been uh, a wonderful Deputy Presiding Officer and you've been a great friend and I wish you all the best in your retirement from this chamber. Um, I want to begin today by acknowledging uh, and doing so with great appreciation the work of all MSPs across this session. And I think particularly over the past 12 months, uh, amidst the stresses of the last year, MSPs have served constituents, scrutinised government decisions and passed legislation that will benefit Scotland for the future. And all of that and more has been done in circumstances that none of us could have imagined five years ago. Indeed, none of us could have imagined even just one year ago. My thanks go to everyone. I want to pay particular tribute, though, to the 34 MSPs from right across this chamber who are standing down at the election. Amongst them are former party leaders, cabinet secretaries, committee conveners and ministers. Uh, four of them, Jean Freeman, Mike Russell, Rosanna Cunningham and Aileen Campbell, are members of the current cabinet. On a personal level, I want to thank each and every one of them for their service. Rosanna Cunningham, who has just made a wonderful valedictory speech, is one of my oldest and dearest friends, as is uh, Mike Russell, uh, just as they met me when I was very young. I first met Aileen Campbell when she was very young. And let me say, I really do hope we see Aileen Campbell back in frontline politics in the future. She is a rare talent. Um, Hannah has got a great contribution still to make. And Jean Freeman, well, Jean Freeman and I have spent more time in each other's company over the past year than either of us have done with our own partners. Um, she has been an outstanding health secretary, but to me over the last year, she has been an absolute rock. I couldn't have got through it without you. Uh, my grateful, heartfelt thanks to you. Uh, each of the 34 MSPs, though, has served their constituents and this parliament with distinction. And I really do sincerely and genuinely wish each and every one of you all of the very best for the future. Uh, our presiding officer, of course, is one of uh, the MSPs standing down and one of the 13 MSPs standing down who was elected to the first parliament in 1999. Uh, we are indeed beginning to feel like an endangered species. Uh, over the past five years as presiding officer, Ken has led parliament through quite exceptional circumstances from the Brexit referendum to the trials and tribulations of COVID, but his willingness to innovate and respond to changing needs has served all of us well. Remote sittings and voting were necessitated by circumstances we would never have envisaged five years ago, but they may, I hope, have an enduring value. I'm conscious that three members leaving this place are doing so because they found that Parliament had a detrimental impact on family and personal life. I hope that the innovations that have resulted from COVID can be used to make sure that no MSP in the future feels that they have to make that choice. And if so, 
That would be uh, a fine legacy uh, for our presiding officer. Ken, thank you for your service and all of us wish you well. Now, I know that Ken would want me to point out that he has been ably assisted at all times by our Parliament's staff and indeed by his deputy presiding officers. And I want to add my personal thanks to our Parliament staff. This has been a difficult period because of COVID, obviously, uh, but also because of some other difficult issues that I wish they hadn't had to deal with over the past uh, number of months. Uh, our Parliament staff have done a superb job, all of them, uh, clerking teams, broadcasting, the official report, security, catering staff, uh, our posties. I've just been told Jimmy the Postman is retiring uh, in a week's time and let's thank him uh, for all of his service too. But to, to each and every one of you, you keep us going and you have kept us safe and we are deeply grateful uh, to you. Uh, I, as I'm sure we all do, want to put on record my thanks to my constituency office staff and personally and on behalf of government colleagues, I, I want to place on record my thanks to the civil service and to uh, my private office in particular, who are a source of uh, never-ending support. You know, the last year has shown that this chamber is the place people look to in times of crisis. It's the place that people expect to respond to their needs, hopes and dreams. In the past five years, in immensely difficult circumstances, MSPs from all parties have risen to the challenges. Uh, this has been one of the busiest sessions since 1999, and I know I'm running out of time, but as well as dealing with COVID and Brexit, this Parliament has passed our first ever Social Security Bill, incorporated the UN uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child, established a Scottish National Investment Bank and passed climate legislation, uh, which will see us become a net zero nation. Uh, I don't think that is a bad legacy at all for this session of Parliament. When the new Parliament reconvenes in May, it will be renewed by fresh faces, fresh thinking and new attitudes. I think we should all listen to Rosanna Cunningham's words of wisdom about the value of forging friendships across party boundaries. Uh, but the new Parliament will be able to build on this Parliament's legacy. For those MSPs who return, I hope that's a spur to further progress. But for the 34 MSPs who are standing down, it should be an enduring sense of pride. This Parliament is grateful to all of them for their service and uh, I want to convey my deep thanks and appreciation to each and every one of them. And with those words, Presiding Officer uh, and Deputy Presiding Officer, it is with great pleasure that I move uh, today's motion in my name. I call Ruth Davidson for around three minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'd like to put on record my support for the, and the support of the Scottish Conservatives for the First Minister's motion today and to wish you well as you retire from Holyrood. While I'm not a class of 99er like the Presiding Officer or the First Minister, I have been here for over a decade, first as staff and then as an elected member for both Glasgow and for Edinburgh Central. Most of that time I was leading my party and one of the many misunderstandings about being an opposition leader is that you actually have much to do with a Presiding Officer. Aside from small talk at ceremonies and lineups and receptions, there's maybe only half a dozen sit-down meetings a year, and that's it. So it wasn't until after I stepped down from the leadership and was elected onto the corporate body that I actually really saw the full responsibility of the office and the immense work that you, Ken, and the top team do. And what an extraordinary time to be involved. When COVID hit and the first lockdown was announced, to watch you and David and Michelle and the team transition Holyrood from a campus where up to 1,800 people could be present on the average sitting day of the average year to a legislature that could still function with barely 100 on site. And how flappable you were and how with your even-handed nature you were absolutely insistent that those who were needed in here would be protected and those who required to work from home or be furloughed would be supported. From clerks to civil servants to IT to cleaners to mailroom staff to security, plus the catering, facilities management, reception, the guides, the creche, everybody, whether they were staff or contractors or subcontractors, they would be supported, both practically and financially. And the Parliament would use its might to ensure that other companies that held contracts here would behave ethically too. We would see our people right, just as they see us right every day. And I was proud of us as an employer, and that stemmed from your leadership. I was slightly perturbed, however, when you confided with the SBCB on a Teams call that despite all six of your children returning home for lockdown, you were welcoming a new arrival. And I was delighted when you brought your new puppy onto the call as well. Presiding officer, in the last 10 years, I have often pushed my luck when it comes to speaking time, and I'm going to beg your indulgence today, because this is also my last speech to Parliament. 
I don't know if it's ever been mentioned that I'm not standing at this election. Um, <laughs> there are many thanks that I have to bring forward. Um, my office staff down the years, Laurie, Andrea, Nick, Dan, Ben, Ed and Elaine, the close team that supported me as leader, Eddie, Adam, Marek and Kevin, Mark McInnes and his team at Central Office and of course my colleagues in Parliament. As the only new Tory elected in 2011 and catapulted to the leadership within six months, I will always be grateful to that 2011 group for all that they taught me. And after that great night when we doubled our number, the team that came in here in 2016 will always be my team. From both, we are losing good servants from this parliament, Margaret Mitchell, Adam Tompkins, Alison Harries, Peter Chapman, Tom Mason, Bill Bowman. And of course, we lost the last of our class of 99. Earlier this term with the passing of Alex Johnson, a big broth of a man with a personality to match. But I'd also like to thank those from other parties who've extended the hand of friendship down the years. The incorrigible gossip of Alex Neil, the lycra dash of Willie Rennie as he passed the office when we shared a floor, and the affectionate chastisement of Joanne Lamont, my Labour auntie, who calmed my wilder outbursts during the referendum period in Better Together. Also, Jenny Mara, who came in in the same intake as me, where our occasional catch-ups down the years uh, migrated from wine and Chinese to a lovely play date between Adam, Sydney and Finn last summer between lockdowns. She'll be a mister to this parliament, which, given her loss and the loss of others, such as Gail Ross and Ailey Campbell, likes to talk the talk on being fam family friendly, but perhaps needs to rethink how it chooses to walk the walk. For my own part, I will miss this place. When I announced in August 2019 that I was standing down as leader and wouldn't seek re-election, I always knew leaving would be a wrench. It is so consuming. It's not just the sitting days, but everything else that goes along with it that is so absorbing, but which also makes it hard to carve out proper time for the ones you love. I don't know how you manage with six kids, presiding officer, as I am run ragged by one, but I am looking forward to a change of working practice. One where when I'm away for a few days a week, it will be hard to be away away, but when I'm home to be properly present with Jen and Finn, well, that is gonna mean worlds. So thank you, Ken, for all you've done as presiding officer, my warmest regards to all the returners and my very best wishes to all 33 other members who are standing down. I support the motion in the First Minister's name. Call Anna Sarwar for around three minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. And can I support the motion in the First Minister's name and echo her comments about uh, yourself, uh, Linda Fabiani, uh, is a fierce but kind politician who I've had the pleasure of spending the last five years uh, with. Uh, lots of nice gossips and chats uh, along the way. Uh, I want to also pay tribute to all those MSPs from across the chamber who are entering either new challenges or going on to, I hope, a happy and peaceful retirement. Uh, for my part, I want to say a particular thank you to my own colleagues, uh, Ian Gray, Joanne Lamont, Elaine Smith, Lewis MacDonald, Jenny Mara, Dave Stewart, Mary Fee and Neil Finlay, who are stepping down from our benches. Each and every one of them has made an enormous contribution to this parliament and to public life. They have represented the very best of our party and more importantly, the best of our country. Um, four of our right retirees are from the 99 intake, five if you include the presiding officer himself. Uh, and while I'm sure they won't thank me for saying it, it is a testament to the length of service representing the Scottish people that you all entered the parliament before I was even old enough to vote. Um, there are, of course, members retiring across. Uh, sorry, First Minister, that includes yourself uh, as well. I can, see, I can see the glare I'm getting from the First Minister there. Um, I imagine I'll get a few more over the coming weeks. Uh, there are, of course, members retiring from across different parties, uh, and too many to mention individually, but each and every single one of them with their own achievements. But I want to recognise two parliamentarians uh, in other political parties. First of all, uh, Ruth Davison, who is uh, having her last day in this chamber today. Um, I can genuinely say that I like her as a human being and as a friend, uh, someone who is good company uh, and someone who is undoubtedly a conviction politician who has been a key personality and figure in Scottish public life for the last decade. She will be a great loss to this chamber and her successor has a very, very hard act to follow. Um, and, the other one, yeah. and the other one is um, our Health Secretary, uh, Jean Freeman. Spending your last year in Parliament as the Health Secretary during a pandemic can hardly be described as easing yourself into retirement. Uh, I know I've been challenging at times uh, with the Cabinet Secretary, particularly around all things around the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, but I, can, I can't thank her enough for the openness and the kindness she has shown throughout. Um, and so I do pay tribute to her and thank her for that. And I know all the families thank her for that also. 
Finally, Presiding Officer, I wish to pay tribute to you. You have presided over the most turbulent period in our Parliament's relatively short history. You and your team have kept our Parliament running amidst the largest national crisis since the Second World War. And for that, you and your team deserve a huge, huge amount of credit. You generally are one of the nicest people in politics. There are still nice people in politics, and you prove that. Um, you have been unflappable and kind uh, as we change to our new environment around COVID. I can only imagine how you keep your cool as uh, a number of our colleagues have struggled to either log in or to vote uh, through the period, uh, being unflappable throughout uh, and understanding and patient as we learn our new uh, environment. And you've also been a reforming presiding officer, uh, opening up our parliament, opening up for opportunities for people from the back benches and opposition and offering greater scrutiny um, as a result. Uh, but more importantly, on a personal note, um, it has been a pleasure. Uh, you are someone I am proud to call a friend uh, as well as a colleague. And uh, Jackie Bailey was informing me at First Minister's question today uh, that you share a birthday with her. Uh, and surprisingly, she tells me that you're actually older than her, uh, which, which uh, which, I'm, which is going to get me in trouble uh, myself. Uh, but also, you're tena you have tenaciously represented the good people of Eastwood and the west of Scotland, and I'm sure all of them would want to thank you uh, for all your uh, efforts over the years. And as a father of six children, it's hard to imagine you'll have a quiet retirement. Uh, but can I say, for the sake of your wife, uh, I hope you finally have a Netflix account. <laughs> and uh, in, in closing, can I thank you and all the parliamentary staff for all the immense work they have done over this five-year period. To the chief executive, to all the staff uh, from top to bottom, thank you so much uh, for everything. And we hope to return after the 6th of May and say thank you again. Thank you. Uh, and I call Willie Rennie for, for around three minutes, please. <laughs> the most unfortunate justic position. Um, uh, I have to say, I've found the most rewarding moments of this Parliament when we have put aside the usual tensions and knuckled down to make life better. And I think the pandemic over the last year has forced us to do exactly that. And I have found, working with various ministers and other members of this Parliament, particularly rewarding, being able to fix problems that are all new to us um, for the betterment of our constituents and the country. Uh, I want to praise the enormous efforts of the parliamentary staff, especially the cleaners and the security staff, but also wish to commend the patience of particularly the, the IT staff and putting up with our endless grumbles about various bits of the voting system. But the chief executive uh, and all his support staff for opening and closing this parliament at a moment's notice, including disrupting their Christmas and their New Year. I think they deserve a particular appreciation eh, for what they've put up with over the last year. Eh, to you, President Officer, your genial, generous style has been, I think, extraordinary in the last year. You have been unflappable. And I think despite the pressure that you've been under, I think you've done the job proud, and I think you've done yourself proud as well. To my constituency staff in the parliamentary pool, um, they have been exceptional. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how they put up with me. Um, I too want to mention uh, Alex Johnson, who, when I first entered this parliament, he was just along the corridor from me, and I still miss his thunderous laughter, banging the table with Jim in hoots and howls for hours on end. He was just such a joy to be around and was my one-man cheerleader in the last parliamentary term. So I will always miss uh, Alex. Um, to my colleague, uh, Mike Rumbles, um, there are many occasions, in fact, many, many occasions, where we have uh, disagreed and voted in different ways. But I have to say, through all of that time, despite my blood pressure on occasions, his challenge has been invaluable, because often, I know we don't want to admit it, but often Mike Rumbles is right. Um, <laughs> I'm just pleased that on the very last day we managed to vote together in exactly the same way. Um, to those retiring, I am sure there is a bit in all of us that is a little bit jealous and are attracted by the potential time 
that is going to open up in your life, hours that you did not know existed in the day. Uh, and to those wishing to return, I do wish you well in the campaign trail. I wish you have fun and a rewarding time because, in that election campaign, because democracy can be a very beautiful thing. Thank you. And finally, I call Alison Johnson. Again, around three minutes, please. Thank you. I'd like to begin by associating myself with colleagues' remarks. My thanks to Linda Fabiani, and I too remember, fondly remember working with Alex Johnston in committee. I'm pleased to support the motion in the name of the First Minister. When this session began in 2016, we couldn't have imagined that it would end a year into a pandemic and the day after a National Day of Reflection to remember all those who have lost their lives. On behalf of my Green colleagues, I thank each and every member of staff in this Parliament, from our cleaners to catering staff, to security staff, the mailroom staff, the chamber desk and beyond, and of course our own staff who we work with day in, day out. The Scottish Government has had to respond to the unprecedented challenge of the pandemic, and this Parliament has worked hard to scrutinise their response. By and large, that scrutiny has been constructive, and the Government has accepted it as such. Many colleagues in Parliament and in Government responsible for this important work aren't seeking re-election. And I pay tribute to colleagues across the Chamber who are standing down today. Many of these colleagues were elected to Parliament in 1999, well, I have learned a great deal from all of you what to do and, on the rare occasion, what not to do. But I thank you all and I wish you all the very best for the future. I'm so pleased to be in a position today to thank my dear colleague John Finney for his work, his wisdom, his hospitality and his great chat. John Finney's legislation to afford children in Scotland the same legal protection from assault as we adults enjoy is one of the most important pieces of legislation passed by the Parliament in this session. The incorporation of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is a significant step that we should celebrate, and we must build on this work to protect and respect the human rights of children and young people in Scotland. They have been remarkable during the pandemic. They've engaged with this Parliament, calling for action on the climate and nature emergencies. And I'm proud, too, that the Parliament can learn from the collective wisdom of the Citizens' Assembly. Of course, the presiding officer is one of the class of 1999, standing down today. In this role, Ken McIntosh's determination to enable and improve scrutiny has made a great difference. His drive to ensure that more members from across the chamber are better able to afford, better able to represent their constituents and afforded greater opportunity to hold the government to account has borne fruit. This is an important legacy and this work mustn't be seen as finished. So it seems wholly appropriate that a presiding officer with a strong and genuine commitment to ensuring that more voices are heard was the bearer of this office at a time when our ways of carrying on business were transformed almost overnight. He has calmly, courteously, and when required, firmly, guided this chamber through this session and this most challenging of years, chairing hybrid sessions with ease, even when our IT skills make this difficult. And his calm, when this chamber was momentarily plunged into darkness, was <laughs> remarkable. He did not miss a beat. From time to time, I've had the pleasure of bumping into the presiding officer at tennis events across the country. But while we both enjoy tennis, it's fair to say that the presiding officer's family deem him a worthy partner in competitive doubles events. While Ken McIntosh isn't seeking re-election, I know that the years ahead of him will be action-packed. His family will see to that, as will the many other interests that call upon his attention. With colleagues across the chamber, I thank Ken McIntosh for his service. He leaves Parliament with the very best and warmest wishes of the Scottish Green Party. Thank you. That concludes the debate on the motion of thanks, and we will move right on to decision time. Uh, there's one question to be put as a result of the business that we have just heard. And that is that motion 24442 in the name of Nicola Sturgeon on a motion of thanks be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is a relief. <laughs> the motion is therefore agreed. And decision time is concluded. But I would very much like now, please, to hand you over to our presiding officer, Mr Ken McIntosh.
Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, first of all, Richard Lyle, for voting for that motion single-handedly. <laughs> it has been some weeks, so before I go any further, can I just say to you, rest easy. I am not going to use my remarks to settle old scores, real <laughs> or imaginary. Uh, I, despite encouragement, I may say so, from some mischievous colleagues amongst us, uh, I'm here simply to thank you. In fact, I've got so many people to thank that I'm a bit of a quandary as to how to go about it. Uh, those of us stepping down from Parliament today, and I'm so grateful to the party leaders for naming them all, because there are literally too many uh, for me to list. Uh, those stepping down will be full of emotion, as I am today. But for those of you who want me to go full Gwyneth Paltrow at the Oscars, <laughs> can I just say that I am far too buttoned up uh, to do that? Well, having said that, both Ruth Davidson and Willie Rennie uh, mentioning the passing of Alex Johnson uh, tested me. I was also uh, bringing to mind my predecessor, Alex, Johnson, uh, Alex Ferguson, and I heard from both our widows very kind letters in the last few weeks, uh, and i just like to see how much we still grieve their passing. But what has struck me over the last few weeks uh, was how many powerful and moving uh, valedictory speeches there have been from colleagues uh, who are also leaving at this election, just uh, this afternoon from Zanna Cunningham, from Aileen Campbell and more. So I thought I would ask fellow members for your suggestions as to who and what to thank today. And I want to begin by thanking you all for being such good-looking and handsome colleagues. <laughs> good-looking and handsome, yes, it's definitely true. It may not be the first quality or attribute I would have singled out, but can I, can I thank Alex Cole Hamilton for that selfless suggestion? <laughs> Alongside, oh, a bit pointed, is it? <laughs> Alongside our public servants, I've also been asked to thank the, the marvellous men and women of the 2nd Platoon Black Watch, 3rd Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Scotland. And that suggestion from Maurice Corrie, of course. <laughs> Mike Rumbles, Alec Neil, and Oliver Mundell asked me to pass on their thanks to the party whips. <laughs> I think the thanks was in inverted commas. And two final rather election-focused requests. One from James Kelly asking if it is too late for me to shout at him and have him thrown out of the chamber. <laughs> and another from Anasawar saying, things are worse than I thought. Could you use your powers and delay the election by a month or two? <laughs> well, can I... <laughs> uh, can I thank you for your indulgence, colleagues? After the past few days, I wasn't sure that we'd be on speaking terms, let alone able to laugh with each other. And I really am grateful to you all. When we all stood here in the well of this chamber some five years ago with our hands raised to swear a, an oath of office, looking forward with excitement and anticipation to what may lay ahead, little did we know that in a matter of weeks the Brexit referendum would change the political landscape and dominate our agenda for the next four years, itself only to be overtaken by the global pandemic that has devastated our economy, bringing grief and misery to many, many tens of thousands of fellow Scots. And it's only natural in these circumstances to feel frustrated, thwarted even. But I want to thank you for what you've achieved despite as well as because of the circumstances. I want to thank you for the families that you have helped, the children with additional support that each of you here will have fought for, the care for those with dementia that you will all have witnessed at first hand. I often feel that the greatest privilege an MSP have is being invited into people's lives, being asked to share in someone's difficulties to know the upset and unfairness that they are wrestling with. To be asked for our help, even if we can't solve their problems, is reward in itself. Not that the voters will necessarily tell you that over the next few weeks. You're more likely to be cynically portrayed as in it for yourselves. But I know how hard you work, how committed you are to your constituents. I thought Bruce Crawford had it right when he said it was all about service. Now, Bruce, who served this parliament with distinction in nearly every capacity, who actually I often think of as the best presiding officer we never had. <laughs> but yes, here in parliament, politics can be a robust business, confrontational even. But even in the midst of our difficulties over recent weeks, colleagues have come together around the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Redress Bill, domestic abuse. And I think it worth remembering that most of what we do achieve, we achieve by working together. I don't just mean across party lines. I mean, for example, the teamwork 
that is there at the heart of a constituency office. For most of us, I imagine there will be three or four people who get everything done. If you want to be an accessible and caring MSP, if you want to sound intelligent and knowledgeable, that will be because your office manager, your researcher and your caseworker are caring and accessible. They are intelligent and knowledgeable. And can I just say to my constituency team, in fact, on your behalf, to all the staff working for us in every part of Scotland right now, thank you for everything you do and for at least trying to make us look good. And I want to extend that appreciation to everyone who works here in Holyrood too. Most of us will know how committed, approachable and diligent our staff at Parliament are. But as presiding officer, I've had the opportunity to see that in spades. In fact, I've been doubly blessed as alongside my constituency staff, I have a private office who look after me in Edinburgh and I genuinely cannot thank them enough for all they do. I was going to name uh, and pay tribute to the many individuals, departments and services that we have here at the Parliament. Uh, I noticed several colleagues try to do that, but as soon as you begin to name one department, I'm just conscious of the many departments that I can't go on to list. What I do know is that as MSPs, we may unfortunately come and go, but the parliamentary service, under the exemplary leadership of our Chief Executive, David McGill, is there to support us in all circumstances. They remain committed to the principles of accessibility, of openness, of transparency, of sharing power with the people of Scotland. And I, when I think of how this Parliament has grown to take its place at the centre of public life in Scotland, so much of that is founded on the effort, the enthusiasm and the dedication of our parliamentary staff. And I, for one, owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. And my final thanks should, of course, be to my family. But I hope you will excuse me, they've already had several mentions, I hope you'll excuse me if, as I know they will, that if I do that privately, none of us could achieve anything in politics without the uh, support and the understanding of our family. But I promised earlier not to choke up, and I wouldn't be able to do that if I did my family justice. So I will speak to them later. So colleagues, it can be difficult in any one session to see what you have achieved. But for those of us who have been here 22 years, and I include the First Minister, I include my fantastic and supportive Deputy Presiding Officers in this. This Parliament and the joint efforts of everyone who has served here has changed Scotland. We've changed from a country with the worst cancer record in Europe to the first in the UK to ban smoking. We've changed from battle to repeal the prejudice of Section 2A to one where we celebrate the Pride March leaving the doors of this very institution from a country scarred by sectarian division to one where the Scottish Muslim community provides us with the Cabinet Secretary for Justice and the leader of the Scottish Labour Party. There is so much more to do and there will be more frustration, but I have no doubt whatsoever that Scotland is undoubtedly a more diverse, a more tolerant and a more self-confident country because of this Parliament and because of the work that everyone here does. When I bang my gavel shortly, it will be not just to end the session and to say thank you to all of those who are stepping down. It will mark the start of an election campaign and to wish good luck to all of you who are standing again. And I will be here on the 13th of May to welcome you back alongside perhaps 40 or 50 new faces, refreshed, reinvigorated, ready to work together for the benefit of our country. And for that, most of all, I want to thank you all. I close this session of Parliament. Thank <laughs> you.